Luke 24, verse 36, when you find that, say amen. amen. Read with me. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, you've stopped reading, Why are ye troubled and why do thoughts arise in your heart? Keep reading. Behold my what? Hands, come on, and my feet, that it is I myself. Stop. Is this before the resurrection or after? After. What is Jesus saying? Well, let's finish. Behold my hands and feet, it is I myself. Handle me and see, finish that verse. For a spirit, come on, hath not flesh and as ye see me have now. Jesus says a spirit doesn't have flesh and bones. But I have them. Now he's God and man at the same time. He's proving that he's what? He said, handle me. I'm physical. I am three-dimensional. Am I right, doctor, now? Oh, doctor, um, don't tell me. Shadow. Huh? <laughs> Blood vessels are three-dimensional things. <laughs> right or wrong? Mm -hmm. Jesus says, I have flesh and bones. As you see me have. Yet he was still God. We have a creator and a savior who has flesh and bones. Now, go to uh, Matthew 28 and see how much it costs God to save us. Matthew 28, let's read from verse 1. Our subject, a personal God. We have 10 minutes left. Matthew 28, reading from verse 1. 28 of Matthew, verse 1. Have you found it? Amen. Read with me. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was what? A great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and rolled away from the stone, the stone from the door, and sat upon it. Verse 3. His countenance was like, and his raiment white as, and for fear of him the keepers did, and became as dead men. Read verse 5. And the angel answered and said unto whom? He said what? Fear not ye, come on, for I know whom you seek. Who's that? Jesus. Ah, which was crucified. Now, read the next verse. He is not here. Now, I want you to stop. You're all intelligent. Do some thinking with me. Favor number three. Listen. Now, there are three things about God. Three qualities he has. A divine being is. Three qualities. He is. Omnipotent, he is. Omniscient, he is. Omnipresent. All right. I told you, let's look at the cost of salvation. Listen to the angel. He is not what? Here. He's somewhere else. Can you say that of an, of an omnipresent person? Come on, talk to me. So Christ has laid aside what? His omnipresence. He cannot be. Every, I didn't say he lost it. I said he laid it aside. That's your savior. Part of the cost of your salvation is a personal decision to lay aside one of the qualities of divinity, omnipresence. The angel said, he is not here. He is somewhere else. Now, you can't say that about the Holy Ghost. You can't say, where's the Holy Ghost? Where well, he's in Malaysia convicting someone of sin. When he's done, he'll pop up in Indonesia. No, he's all, he's all over the place at the same time. How that happens, we don't know. But Christ can't do that. Because he is locked in human flesh, willingly, he cannot be everywhere at the same time, even though he is still God. Now, Having said that, he's in human flesh, he can't be everywhere. John 14, 1 to 3, don't turn to it. Say it. It's not written on my face, just say it. <laughs> Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. You know, Christ likes to tell you what you need to know. If Sunday were the Sabbath, I would have told you. 
If I wanted a man to have two wives, if I wanted you to eat pork, mm -hmm. if it were not so, come on, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Question for you, are angels powerful beings? One angel came down, Matthew 28, there was an earthquake, one. One angel killed 185,000 of Sennacherib's army, Sennacherib's army, the Assyrians, 185,000 in one night. One angel. Could an angel have prepared the home for us? Yes. Listen to Jesus. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you where? Unto myself. But think with me. Is Jesus with us now, yes or no? Yes. But what do you mean? Is he with us personally? Does he have flesh and bones, yes or no? Yes, he said that. Is Christ with us on a flesh and bones level, yes or no? No. How is he with us? Through the agency of the Holy Spirit. He is not with us on a personal flesh and bones level as we are with one another. But he wants that. And so he tells the disciples, I will come again. And do what? Where? Unto myself. He is not satisfied with dwelling with us through the Holy Ghost. Now we're grateful for that. But that's not close enough. I want to represent myself. So I'm coming for you. No need for the Holy Ghost to represent me. God bless the Holy Ghost. Don't misunderstand me. The Bible says, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, there's no forgiveness. So I'm choosing my words carefully. Don't mess with the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? But Christ wants to be with us personally. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. My brothers and sisters, we serve a God who is dying to be close to us.